Sunrise at Campobello. It's more than the name of a famous play and film. It's truly a sight to behold. No wonder Franklin Delano Roosevelt called Campobello his beloved island. For the wealthy Roosevelt family, this small Canadian island was an escape from the heat of New York summers and the constraints of New York society. What role do you think his time on Campobello played on him becoming the man he became? My sense is that probably more than any place, he could be himself on Campobello Island. He was treated by the islanders as just a regular individual. And I think it brought him closer to recognizing that, you know, we're all the same. Christopher Roosevelt is Franklin and Eleanor's grandson and vice chairman of Roosevelt Campobello International Park. Spread across the 3,000 acres of the family's former estate, the park is jointly funded and managed by the United States and Canada. The park is, we believe, the only true international park in the world. The Roosevelt's 34-room cottage still looks as if the family had just stepped out for a quick swim. Franklin's ashtray is at the ready, and Eleanor's megaphone is there on the porch. Do you want me to call to Franklin? I do. I will do that then. <laughs> Franklin! How great! That's pretty amazing. Like so many Campobello natives, park guides Teresa Mitchell and Darlene Savage speak of Eleanor and Franklin as if they were dear friends. He loved Campobello. He loved the cottage. He loved the people. And by all accounts, the feeling was mutual. As a boy, FDR learned to sail under the tutelage of island fishermen. No small accomplishment. Here in the Bay of Fundy, you'll find the highest tides in the world, rising and falling as much as 30 feet every six hours. Franklin, Eleanor, and their five children enjoyed a vigorous outdoor life. They lived without electricity or a telephone. Eleanor indulged in just one high society practice. Every day at 3 p.m., she served tea. But it was a democratic affair, and children from island families were always welcome. She was she, the kind of girl if she said, I'm bringing five, make sure you're ready for ten. <laughs> she was very social. Yeah. She was. She enjoyed having company. She didn't love things, she loved people. And she always had an open ear. I think that's what made her such a great first lady. As for Franklin, he suffered a debilitating attack of polio in this bedroom in 1921 at age 39. Let me assert my firm belief that the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. There are many theories as to how he persevered and found the strength to lead the United States through the Great Depression and on to victory in the Second World War. But ask Campobello Island Mayor Stephen Smart, and he'll tell you the answer lies right here. He hadn't been sedentary. He'd been outside. He'd been enjoying the world, and not always from a steamer window, right? Out in it. Because if you're going to survive on an island like this, you've got to be mentally tough, and you've got to be willing to take some risks, so. Right. It was great training for his presidency. I, I, I would say that. As depicted in Sunrise at Campobello, Local fishermen helped FDR secretly leave the island in 1921, hiding his condition from the press. When he returned 12 years later, he had become leader of the free world. I think he had such a love for the island and the people on the island that he just had to go back there. It was kind of a place where he became rejuvenated. He became fed and nourished by those relationships. And I think that's why he kept going back to Campobello. 